In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how you can customize your settings in EDIUS. And I know that some of you are probably getting a little anxious to uh, start uh, editing and uh, looking at tutorials that will demonstrate how to edit. And you could just skip right to those tutorials, but I'm afraid that if you did that, that uh, what would happen is I might show you something in the tutorial and you try it on your computer and it just doesn't work. And the reason is, is because the settings that I have on my laptop on, on, uh, for my uh, working environment in EDIUS are going to be different than yours. And so I think it's important to take a tutorial here, take one lesson, and sync up our settings so that the settings that you have on your computer are going to be identical to mine so that when I demonstrate a feature or a function, you will be able to watch that and try the same thing on your computer and it will be more likely to work. One of the things that I like the most about EDIUS is that they are very flexible in the way that you can set up your program to emulate other editing software that are that is out there. I've, I've worked with programs and we won't mention any names, <laughs> but I've worked with some editing programs that are very restrictive in how they allow the editor to operate and to work. But EDIUS allows you to set up the environment so that uh, people who are coming from Avid software can just sit down and be in an environment that's almost as if they're still working with uh, Avid. Or if someone's coming from Adobe software, you can set up EDIUS to almost have the same feel as if you were working with Premiere Pro. And that way it makes it very easy to transition from uh, one program into EDIUS. And that's important because more and more uh, broadcast stations are picking up uh, Grass Valley equipment and it comes with this EDIUS software. And, and if you can set that up in a way that works very similar to what you're used to, it makes the transition very easy. Okay, so with that in mind, uh, you should know that uh, most of these tutorials that uh, we're going to be showing you here at EDIUS Tips are going to be done in an environment, a working environment that is very similar to uh, Adobe products. That's kind of my background, that's what I'm used to, and that's how I have set up my editing uh, workflow. And uh, so if you're coming from another program, please bear with me on that. Learn what you can from the tutorials uh, in, in an Adobe kind of setting. And then once you're finished watching the tutorials that you want to, you can change your settings back to emulate more of an Avid environment. All right. Uh, now, the catch is that Edia seems to assume that most of the editors that uh, are making the transition to Edius are coming from an Avid background. And so the way that they have set up their settings by default tend to lean towards more of a, an Avid environment than an Adobe environment. So what we need to do is go up and uh, change a few settings. And uh, as I do this, uh, be, it would be great if you could change these settings on your system as well so that we can kind of be on the same page as we go through these tutorials. So let's go up to settings and take a look at what we have here. It's up in the menu area, settings. Okay, now uh, under settings, under the menu settings, we see that we have uh, five options there. Let's take a look at these. Uh, we won't go in depth or detail on all of these items. There's quite a few. At first glance, the first time you run the system settings, it may look as though there's not that many options there to change. But as you open these up, you'll see that there are indeed a lot. The first one, capture. You know, these days, I don't know too many people that are still shooting on tape and need to capture tape. But when I do capture tape, I do like to have the confirm file names checked. And I like to do it before capture rather than after capture. What else here? We like to Looks like all of these by default in version 7 are just exactly the way I like them, so we're good to go on that. Let's check our next one, check for updates, that's fine. Looks like they've added some new options here in, in version 7. We're just going to go through them uh, quickly and make sure that we don't see any big red flags. Profile. Here is a place where you could add a new profile. Let's say there's a new editor that's joining your team. Well, they could set up a new profile and be able to work with that. The reason why that's important is because uh, any changes that we make to our system settings 
or our user settings uh, or keyboard shortcuts or whatever, uh, it will be remembered the next time you work with that user profile. And your keyboard preferences might be completely different than the next guy. And so uh, it's important to have uh, each individual who's working on your computer, uh, editing in Edius, to have their own individual profile. Let's keep going here. We saw this in a previous tutorial. I still haven't added my extra four or five. We'll get to that. Render. That's all fine. Well, no big flags uh, so far. Hardware. We'll come to this in another tutorial when we uh, show you how to capture tape. It looks like the system settings are all fairly good. Let's uh, hit OK on that and go to User Settings and see what we have here. Let's go up to the top one, Application. The background job, that's fine. Match frame is fine. Other, here I like to usually change this to 10 number of files, uh, the recently used files to show up project name. Here is where you could change your uh, project folder and drive if you find one of your hard drives filling up or if you're starting a brand new project. It's a huge project um, and you might be uh, maybe se saving several different versions of that same type of project. Well, you might want to come here and change the uh, default folder and uh, hard drive for that. We'll leave it as is for now. Here on the auto save, you might want to take a look at this and uh, see if you want to make any changes here. I like to have the number of files the, that are saved automatically to 10. Um, the interval, I don't necessarily need it to be every three minutes, especially as the program gets larger and uh, you know takes a second or two to save. I don't really like that happening every three minutes. And EDIUS is such a stable program, it hardly ever crashes anyways. So I usually set that to 10 minutes to have an auto-save happen every 10 minutes. Proxy mode, timeline. I usually like to have the first three boxes checked. Over here is the big place where we need to kind of sync up our settings. By default, it comes with sync mode on, ripple mode on, and an, um, a mode of editing that is called an insert mode of editing. And this really is what is sets up EDIUS to kind of emulate the Avid uh, software. Whereas the Adobe software is more the reverse, where you have all of these off and we're going to use the overwrite mode of editing. So if you could make those changes, most of our edits will use these settings. Now there may be the odd time when it is actually advantageous to be in the sync mode, in the ripple mode, and be in the insert mode of, of editing. And when we come to those exceptions, we'll point those out and maybe have you go back and temporarily make those changes. Uh, you can also do it uh, actually on the timeline as well. Okay, let's go to preview. Well, that that all seems fine. Overlay. Playback. Um, the faster you become at EDIUS, the more likely it will be that you will want to have more of these checked. When I'm working very rapidly, I don't want the timeline to stop every time I am adding something to the timeline or making some type of change to the timeline, maybe trimming a clip and that type of thing. I really want the timeline cursor to keep on rolling. Hopefully, by the time that the um, playhead gets to the point where I've made my trim, I'm finished, and it'll be able to show it. So I like to have all of those checked. It's a personal preference. It's not a big deal. It's not going to affect how you are able to follow along with the tutorials. But the faster you get, the more likely you'll want to have those checked. Pre-roll editing we won't worry about. The user interface. The first one... The first one uh, deals with how you want to uh, have your bin window look, and we're going to take a separate tutorial to deal just with the bin window, so we'll maybe come back to that. Buttons. Here is where you can add more buttons and options to uh, either your timeline window or your bin window. For example, if you would like to have more icons up here on your 
your icon menu strip, well, here's where you can add those. Some people like to, um, rather than use keyboard shortcuts, point to an icon to um, do the things that they want to do. Um, kind of a button approach to editing. Well, I'm pretty happy with uh, the buttons that come by default. However, there is one that I always like to add, and as I do that, you'll get a, a quick view of how this works. There's one that I like to add to the timeline menu uh, strip, and uh, so what you need to do is change this uh, option up here to be the timeline, and here on this side, you'll see all of the uh, buttons that could be placed on your timeline menu strip, the icon menu strip. And over here, we see what our current buttons are. Now, the one that I always like to add when I'm uh, setting up a new software program from Edius is to create a still image. I like to have that on, as a button. So once you've selected it, you can send it over to the current button list and then hit apply and we'll notice over here that it is now added to our timeline menu strip, our icon menu strip. So if there are some other options that uh, might be kind of emulating the software that uh, you are used to working in that aren't on your icon menu strip for your timeline, you might want to check it out here and see how you might be able to add some of these little functions and features to your timeline that will make this to be a more comfortable environment for you. Control, we're not gonna worry about that. Keyboard shortcuts, we're gonna come back to this in another tutorial, so we'll leave that for now. Window color, uh, if you're not happy with the colors of, uh, your, of your interface as it comes by default, here's where you can change these colors. I'm pretty happy with just the way it comes, so I'm going to leave it. But uh, if you want to play around and, and see what it looks like with some other colors, here's where you can do that. Under Source, Duration. Here in this uh, window option, there is something that I always like to change. This is a, an annoying little thing for your audio rubber band. Uh, when you go to make a, an audio crossfade, for some reason, by default, it comes so that the last five seconds of one audio clip is dropped right down to zero, and then the first five frames of your next audio clip, or video clip that has audio, is also set to zero and rises up over five frames. It's just, I have no idea why Edius is doing that. Maybe if somebody who's watching this can clue me in as to why they set this to five frames, you can email me and clue me in. Uh, but when I make a crossfade, I don't want anything going down to zero. I just want it to crossfade. So set that to zero. Again, that's not a big thing. It's not going to mess you up when we're when you're following the tutorials, but Eventually, you'll find out that uh, when you do your your crossfades, that you, for some reason your audio rubber bands are are going right down to zero. Well, I think that those are the main things that I wanted to have you change. Let's hit OK on that. Before we finish up our tutorial, we'll just take a look at a couple of other uh, options here under settings. You remember we mentioned that at any point in time, you can change your project settings from with inside a project, and here's where you do that. Let's say, for example, <clears throat> that we want to uh, you know, promote our project to be a 10-bit project. Well, we can just hit uh, Change Project Settings, go to Advanced, and change it from 8-bit to 10-bit, hit OK, and now we are working within a 10-bit environment just like that and so if you find yourself inside a project that just really isn't matched well with the footage that you're bringing in and you see that the majority of your footage is actually in another uh, frame rate well again you can go in to change the current settings to something else let's uh, change this back to uh, 8-bit but uh, notice here where you can you know, change your settings to be something else uh, as far as a video preset, an aspect ratio, frame size, field order. You know, there's all sorts of changes you can make with inside a project. Um, it doesn't actually allow you to change everything, but it, it does allow you to change a lot of items. 
sequence setting. Here's where you can actually name your sequence. Um, I don't usually go up there because you can just right click on the tab of any sequence and choose uh, sequence settings. And uh, here's where we can change the, the name. And uh, now we've got a new uh, name for our sequence. Let's see, one more thing here is uh, change profile. If you, for some reason, have uh, ended up in uh, somebody else's profile and none of your keyboard shortcuts are working and all the settings seem to be off, well, here you could check and make sure that you're working under the correct uh, profile. All right, well, I believe that those are the main things that I wanted to show you on how you can customize your settings and how you can sync up your settings to be just like mine. So for now, that does it for customizing your settings in EDIUS 7.